in a short moment of open intelligence, we introduce ourselves to our very powerful identity, our very powerful intelligence. An intelligence that for most of us, most of our lives has gone unrecognized. This intelligence that's, that's wholly positive, beneficial, knows what to do and how to act in each situation. So most of us have grown up learning to emphasize only the content of this intelligence, the content, the data, the experiences, the thoughts, the emotions, the sensations. So we've lived in a lifestyle of giving all of the descriptions of open intelligence a meaning, a definition, a dictionary definition, and then only placing all of our attention on the descriptions. And then we've grown up in a community of people also doing the same, emphasizing all the descriptions, whether it's positive or it's negative or it's somewhere in between. So growing up we've had lots of examples of people acting out on data. And if you take the topic of, of anger, for instance, we have many examples of people either indulging anger or avoiding or replacing it. And yeah, we see where that leads us. <laughs> so in the Balance Sioux training, when we hear we can rely on open intelligence, get to know our intelligence that is clear, powerful, inexhaustible, and unaffected by the data, yet it includes and contains all data. This is something for most of us really new and, and a radical approach to viewing our reality, our day-to-day -day reality. So open intelligence, when we stop thinking, what is naturally present when you just stop thinking for a moment? There's an intelligence. Yeah, that simple. What's looking, what's hearing. Um, when I came to the training, I was trying to define intelligence, open intelligence, related to all the um, definitions that I had been accumulating or reading about. But the invitation here is just to keep it very simple, recognize open intelligence in short moments, repeated many times, and then whether there is thinking or no th thinking, open intelligence still remains. Whether we feel angry and really ramped up, the open intelligence is the exact same as when we feel blissful. So open intelligence is primary. The thoughts, the emotions, and sensations are not primary. They are only due to this open intelligence. So it's really important we get to know what is primary, what is required to even have these experiences. So short moments repeated many times, open intelligence becomes automatic, or it's just obvious at all times. It's like, and previously it has been in the background. And the only thing that was in our purview was data. Anger arises, that's, that's all we see. And we look around and we see the examples of other with anger. So in short moments, it's kind of, it's like an opening. We start to open up all these dictionary definitions and seeing really what is at the basis of them. So that we actually, our life completely shifts from only focusing on and emphasizing descriptions of positive, negative, and neutral to relying on our innate wisdom that is naturally compassionate, naturally skillful, and it includes and contains all data as well. So the, yeah, initially when we come and we hear about short moments, it is like we have to actively remind ourselves. And anger is such a powerful example, it's probably, it comes up for, for all of us, you know, even if we say, oh, I'm not an angry person, at some point I'm sure there will be something that will push this button that will make us angry. So we see we have um, a reminder, a reminder to rely on short moments of letting anger be as it is. Now, initially that may not, we may, we may indulge or we may avoid or we may replace it, but more and more we will remember to let anger be as it is. And within the Balance You setting, we have a support network that provides tools and an environment to actually let data be as it is. Like we're surrounded with people who will um, inspire us or 
share their experience of how it's been to let something as strong as anger be as it is, where we see that if we don't act on it, it's not the end of the world and that we'll actually find solutions. And, yeah, if you look at, <laughs> I mean, a lot of media, movies, it's like if you, the instance you describe where you see somebody being picked on and degraded, in the movie, it's usually like there are two, two or three heroic men or women that come in and, you know, knock the person out, and everybody cheers. Yeah, you defeated evil. <laughs> but in reality, I mean, if you were to do that at that venue the other night with thousands of people, who knows how that would have turned out? Would it turn out like the movie where everybody's cheering you on, they lift you up on their shoulders, and you're the hero of the day because you knocked out anger? But um. <laughs> That's really not so practical, actually. So, to let it be as it is can feel sometimes conflicting. It feels like I need to do something, or I need to bottle it up so that I don't react and get into a fight, or I need to um, just get out of here. So, luckily, in the Balance You setting, we have so many people that will support us in allowing data to be as it is, and we can feel safe more and more safe to let something as strong as anger be as it is, and to recognize that it too is this shining forth of open intelligence. It's inseparable from open intelligence, like um, the color blue in the sky are completely inseparable. It's impossible to take blue out of the sky. It's impossible to remove the descriptions, whether it's anger or if it's um, bliss. It's impossible to find that they have a nature of their own. When we just look into them, there's nothing really there. All data are the basic space of open intelligence. But intelligence inclu includes and contains all data equally and evenly. So this is training up to actually instinctively realize this so that we do open up for more clarity, insight, discernment, harmonious relationships. So. It, Anger is a powerful reminder, and then we see the power that it is, is actually this power to be of great benefit. So in my own case, I just see time and time again, it's letting data be as they are, letting things settle, and relying on the support of the Four Mainstays to empower the data stream, to, co to clarify it. So we have such a, a wonderful and powerful support network that's that's just freely available for anyone and anyone who is interested in testing out short moments of open intelligence until it becomes automatic and then we'll receive it. We are no longer at the whim of data and there's no longer a knee-jerk reaction to everything. And that usually happens gradually, but it's consistent that we more and more see that open intelligence is primary and that data are inseparable from it. So it's important to know that, you know, open intelligence isn't some special state like bliss. It includes bliss, and includes all descriptions, but it's not limited to any of them. It includes and contains all of them. So it's not some destination that we reach, and all of them are just blissful and <laughs> floating around, and nobody bothers us, and we can... The more and more you see, you could be in any situation, and you see that open intelligence is primary, and that if if I indulge, avoid, or replace, I know the consequences. They just are very obvious, and then we can choose to reset again. It's like having a reset button. So that's perfect. And and these examples that we hear, that we've heard you share today, that you know we're recognizing something different, a different choice, <clears throat> rather than only reacting to whatever is occurring for us. And um, super immediate benefit, I like that. There is immediate benefit in each short moment. That was something that I noticed right away from coming to the training, was that there was immediate benefit in those short moments. It was the first time that I actually could allow myself to be as I am and not look for any um, props to hold me up, any reference points, not trying to compare the training to anything else I had learned, not emphasizing all of my data, just to rest naturally. 
I think I'm sure it was the first time I ever really fully relaxed and noticed that something was okay about me. I've spent most of my life worrying, just worrying all the time. Even in positive situations, worrying that it's going to end. In a negative situ situation, worrying that it will get worse. Or in the neutral bored states, just worrying that I'll not experience anything else. So this constant worry and this underlying undermutter of negativity for me is just, it's softening and it's not the main topic of conversation anymore. So being of more benefit, well, like, <laughs> and again, in this society that we've been growing up in, there, there are just so many examples of just pushing yourself to such limits to be a better person, to not be that angry person. You know, we have anger management and you have counseling and you have kickboxing and you have all these strategies to try to make ourselves into a better person. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it's usually the results are never really permanent and lasting in terms of what we were really looking for. So these short moments are they're a great gift. And I, I see in my own experience to not underestimate the power of the short moments. If we test it out, if we take today and we say, okay, everything that comes up in my experience and I see that I'm emphasizing all the stories around it, I can choose to, in the short moments, let everything be as it is. Like you're letting the breeze in the air right now be as it is. Or we're letting the trees be as they are. We can let the thoughts just be as they are. They won't kill us. We can let the emotions be as they are, whether it's a positive emotion or a negative emotion. And we can let all the sensations be as they are. Just letting them be as they are. And then we can see all this, the mind wanting to go into why, why, when, how. Relax right there. A short moment of immediate benefit. And in so doing, we just, the capacity to have these skillful means for what is needed become more and more just so clear and obvious. It doesn't mean we become passive and neutralized and or anything. We're just turning up that wisdom power of open intelligence. <clears throat> yeah, trying to be a better person, it's just such hard work. I mean, innately, we are amazing and exalted. But we've been living a life of emphasizing everything that pops into our mind. And everyone around us has been doing the same exact thing. So here we get real, and things come up, and we let them be as they are for short moments many times. We can participate in the trainings. A lot of people like to read instructions, and in, the, in all of the Balance View literature and media, completely confirming our open intelligence identity, confirming that there's nothing wrong with any data stream. It's equal and even to open intelligence. So the training is a very powerful tool. We can read, we can listen, you can just download some of the talks from the information ta table and you take that with you. They're useful in a time of crisis, you know, you could just read a few lines of text for a, and it may give you an immediate insight. Because, you know, living our entire lives focusing on data, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden we're never f focusing on data again. That's not usually like that for most of us. So we need tools to remind us, to support us. And, and then we also have a trainer. Many, there are many trainers in Balance who, who are more than happy to share their experience. I'm, I'm always sharing my direct experience. And, and um, it's just so helpful to know that there's another human who is relying on open intelligence rather than only data descriptions. And we have a community of people all over the world. We have this center here in Goa. We meet online for video meetings or teleconference meetings. Um, we have the Facebook groups and 
You know, it's just so powerful to hear people's direct everyday experience. You know, how does it apply to anger? How does it apply, apply to feeling overwhelmed? How does open intelligence apply to intimate relationships with parents, with your health? Open intelligence enlivens all areas of life. It doesn't mean we live in some cut-off state where we remove ourselves from society and only practice short moments of open intelligence. Although you could do that if you really, really wanted to, but most of us have commitments and responsibilities, so we want a lifestyle of open intelligence. So we live a lifestyle of increasing benefit, of increasing wisdom, increasing compassion, increasing harmony. And that happens within. And we test it in our direct experience so that we know it's true for ourselves and then we know it, it's, it will work for other people. Like when you know that it works for you, you just without a doubt know that it will work with, with everyone. And the training can be very customized to meet people from all over the world, from all cultures, all backgrounds. You know, what, is, what is innate in all of us? What unifies every being? Open intelligence. This intelligence that we identified when we stopped thinking. The intelligence that fuels, that's inseparable from all thinking, all emotions, all sensations. So it's, um, it can be raw, but it's also alive and powerful and nothing to fear in open intelligence. We feel safe and held no matter the, the circumstance.